Hey, this is Corey, and in this screencast, I wanted to demonstrate the examples that uh, ship with Pegasus. Um, and so unlike some of the other functionality around users and teams, the examples are not meant to um, be part of your application. They're meant to be uh, building blocks that you can copy paste or you can modify or you can work from in order to add functionality to your application. So these are not things that will get integrated right out of the box, but, but things that you can use as a, as a starting point to add uh, different functionality to your applications. Um, and I'll just, I'll just kind of go through these uh, one at a time. So the first thing I'll show is payments. Uh, payments right now uh, is something that you can do with uh, Stripe. And it's, it's for simple one-off payments. And so um, in this example, uh, you just add a name field. So like my payments. And uh, you put in a, a card. Uh, and I'm just going to use a Stripe test card. Uh, you agree to the terms. And this is going to uh, make a payment. And so this is, now if we go back to the payments demo, you can see uh, that new payment was just made. Uh, today is the 17th. Um, I could go to uh, my Stripe dashboard and uh, I probably should have had this ready, but I'll go to Pegasus and I will go to test data. And you can see now, a $25 payment was just made. Um, and um, yeah, so that's that's payments. And, and obviously, uh, you know, this is, this is a fully working example that you can then uh, take and put in your application. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show is the object lifecycle. And this is basically uh, a interactive data model in UI um, and and the goal here is just one to, to show how do you sort of work and, and manipulate a data model and then and then two to provide sort of a nice architecture that you can build off and and so this is using this is a single page application using Django rest framework and react um, and it has a simple data model for uh, a demo employee uh, thing so you can imagine you are populating some employees uh, we can go with Michael Scott, uh, I don't know what department that would be. Uh, let's call it human resources. We'll give him a salary, um, and you know you can you can also obviously edit uh, edit those details if you make any mistakes. We can add another one, uh, Jim. Is it Halpert? Um, maybe he's in marketing, and maybe he gets paid really well. Um, yeah, so that's the object lifecycle. Um, nothing too fancy, but but again, sort of, it's it's less about the data being put in and more about the the code architecture that you can start from and and having that functional example to build off of. Um, Links to the object lifecycle is is this charts thing, um, and so again, this is just kind of to show how you might incorporate charts into uh, into your application. And this is this is that data that I just put in. Um, so if I go back now to the object demo, and I add, that's uh, uh, embarrassing, but I don't know Pam's last name, but um, we'll put Pam in. Uh, marketing as well and and Pam really uh, does well so she she gets paid a lot um, and uh, now if I go back to the charts you can see the um, the marketing budget has increased the average salary has gone way up um, if I go back and add a third person um, I really don't watch the office enough uh, but um, we'll just add uh, Barney, and we'll make him an engineer. Uh, then, you know, um, the new category will get added, and and etc. So that's charts. Uh, the next thing I'll show is background tasks. So uh, this this is using 
a library called Celery. And Celery lets you run asynchronous and scheduled jobs in the background. And so the, the key times you might need this is anything that takes a little while. So uh, common examples are um, data imports, data exports, any sort of like large data processing thing. Oftentimes things that have to do sort of IO. Uh, so maybe if you need to do a bunch of web requests or send a bunch of email, things like that. Um, and this is just, this button will then, um, a lot of this is happening behind the scenes, but this button will kick off a background task and then it will um, run that task while tracking its progress uh, behind the scenes. And uh, eventually when it's finished, it will uh, show you that. And um, yeah, there's there's more details I could go into on this. Again, it's it's a very simple example, but there's a lot there's a lot going on in the code. Um, and then finally, uh, Pegasus ships with basically its own landing page, but you're welcome to take that and run with it. Um, and uh, you know, this is obviously responsive, mobile friendly, um, and uh, and likewise, there is the uh, pressing page that is also uh, part of Pegasus. And this um, this also uh, is basically Pegasus pressing page. But again, you're welcome to start from there. It's responsive. Um, yeah. And so that is basically uh, all of the examples. And, and again, so these, you can take them, you can modify them at will and and put them where you need within your application uh it's designed not again not as sort of a, a starting point but as as a reference that that you can then sort of pull in and and figure out how you want to how you want to use it um and uh yeah there's also api documentation which uh which you can see here um, if this loads yeah, so uh, all, all the APIs, this is just using a, a Django REST framework uh, library, but all the APIs that you create will um, be self-documented here. And you can see that uh, these are the employee APIs that, that power the, the object demo. Cool. So those are the current examples. All of these are uh, completely uh, free to try out if you just go to saspegasus.com, create an account and then go to the examples gallery. You can play with all of these. You'll have your own uh, sandbox where you'll be able to make your own payments, your own uh, object demos, etc. Um, so I encourage you to, to log in, check it out. Let me know if you have any feedback. And yeah, those are, those are the examples.